Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is with us today. And for those who will listen in later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, this is the recording for Saturday, July 29th, 2023 on the Gregorian calendar. And in the Hebrew calendar month of Av, it is the 11th day. The year is 5783. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Well, this is the last Shabbat for the month of July. So. Um, Next week, we will be um, having Holy Communion because it'll be the first uh, Shabbat for the month of August. So um, I just want to also mention that, yes, I am still pre-recording services. Uh, I thought maybe I, things were settling down a little bit. And uh, as it turns out, there was another glitch. So we're going to just continue to forge uh, ahead. Um, and pre-record them so that way um, they are definitely ready for posting to the social media platforms when they're supposed to be posted. So um, for those, that, again, that are following us on YouTube and Rumble only, yes, you will get your, you will get these services earlier than um, the, the, the appointed times for them. Um, but that's the reason why. Now, for those that are just following on the social media platforms and Click on when um, uh, when it is posted to social media. It won't really affect you. It's just you need to know that these are done ahead of time uh, because we had a major, major problem with our paid service that uploads to YouTube. So, and I'm hoping, uh, I was assured that uh, this, this latest issue was because of an upgrade and they have worked out the kinks. So hopefully that is so. But in the meantime, we are still pre-recording. So <laughs> that's where we are with that. Um, so in this upcoming week, we have our Bible study, which is continuing um, in the English Standard Version of the Bible. So we will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 through 7. And also for those that are involved in the class, Hearing from God, we are meeting Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our free conference call.com channel. Now, if you missed the class this time uh, and you are interested in taking the class, please let me know. I will keep your name. And then when we offer it again, I will reach out to you uh, and and get you set up with all of that. Um, but. Uh, even if you cannot participate, if you're not participating in the class this time, if you have prayer requests and you would like for us to lift them up in corporate prayer on a Tuesday night, uh, we would be honored to do so. So um, that is all I'm going to say about that. Um, and with that, that's really um, all the announcements I actually do have for this week, which is very little, which is unbelievable, but it is a quieter week, and this is a single parashat. This is not one of those double parashat Saturdays um, also. So with that being said, I'm going to open up our opening prayer, and we are going to get Shabbat service underway. Avina Malkino, our Father, our King, I just want to thank you first and foremost for today. The day that you sanctified as holy, this is the seventh day of the week, this is Saturday, this is the Sabbath, this is the day that you sanctified as holy, and you gave us that in, in a perfect example when you did creation in six days and rested on the seventh day. You're an amazing Father, and we just look to you for all things. We ask your Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, direct us, show us what it is that we need to grasp from this week's Shabbat service, that we can digest it and make it part of our spirit and our walk with the Lord. And we just thank you. We thank you for everything, Father God. We are just so blessed to be in your presence and be here. We give you all of our praise and thanksgiving and all honor and glory belongs to you. We pray this prayer in the name above all names, the mightiest name of all, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, 
Amen and Amen. In Exodus chapter 20, beginning with verse 8, it says, Remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. In it you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. The Lord's greatest commandment, please say this with me now, Shema Israel, Adonai Elohimu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kivud, Maputo, Leolam, Vayad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. And blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Find them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And Yeshua stated the second greatest commandment and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and prophets hang on these two commandments. The Amidah standing before God, we are going to say three of the blessings, and the first blessing is the patriarchs. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, God most high, who bestows loving kindness and creates all who remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their descendants for the sake of his name. In love, king, helper, savior, and shield, blessed are you. Adonai, shield of Abraham. And the second blessing is God's might. You are mighty forever, Lord, giving life to the dead. Great is your saving power. He sustains the living with steadfast love and with great compassion. Gives life to the dead. He upholds the fallen, heals the sick, sets the captives free, and keeps faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, Master of might, and who can compare with you? O King, who brings death, restores life, and causes salvation to flourish. You are faithful to revive the dead. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives life to the dead. And the third blessing is Kedusha, and that means holiness. You are holy, and your name is holy, and holy ones praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. And the word holy in Hebrew is Kedush, and holiness is Kedusha. Matavu, how lovely, how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, and your dwellings, O Israel. Because of your great loving kindness, I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. And I, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. As for me, I will bow in worship. I will kneel before Adonai, my maker. As for me, my prayer to you, Adonai, is for a time of favor, O God, in your great love. Answer me with the truth of your salvation. And it's Chaim, the tree of life declaration. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and happy are those who cling to it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are shalom. And we say this of the Torah. Bring us back to you, Adonai, and we will return. Renew our days as of old. Hayam hahu in that day. And it is said, Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day, Adonai will be Echad, and his name, Echad. And Echad means one, or a composite oneness. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified. Amen. In the world that he created by his will. And may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to sprout, and may he bring the Messiah closer. Amen. In your lifetime, and in your days, and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel speedily and soon, and say amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever, blessed and praised, glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, uplifted and lauded, be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing and song, praise and consolation spoken in the world, and say amen. 
May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel. And say amen. May he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us and upon all Israel. And say amen. And the blessing of Messiah. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Asher naten lanu devar hakayim Mashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of life, Messiah Yeshua. Say with me now Messiah's prayer. Our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And in the ancient days, the Kohen Gadol sounded the shofar to gather the children of Israel to worship. We're going to sound a shofar now. In a moment, I'm going to pause it for you to listen to some praise and worship. Yes, praise and worship is one of the most important elements of any service, and we do praise and worship. However, for those that have been following our ministry, you know that we do not incorporate music in our recordings for part one and part two of Shabbat service. The reason being there were so many issues when we began posting online um, that we decided to just stay away from it because people were losing their platforms um, on various places and there was a lot of issues for them to get their platforms back. Now, I do know that some some do now use music and they'll, they'll state a disclaimer. We just haven't joined in on doing that. Uh, so for those that follow us on social media, you know, that every week, I know there's a lot of posts that go on, and there's a reason for that. And this this is part of the reason because of the issues. Um, and we we do post praise and worship songs as suggestions. So what I usually do is I, I will post the scriptures for um, for each Shabbat service, for the Shabbat service of the week. And then I will post a series of songs, and they can be suggest they are suggestions for part one of Shabbat service. Then I will post part one and part two of Shabbat service for both YouTube and Rumble channels. And then I will post a second series of songs and that second series of songs, of course, uh, are suggestions for part two. So that's how we've been doing it. And I know there's, <laughs> it's a lot of posts. Um, and, and this is the reason why we've been doing it because of the issues that, that occurred. And um, so we just chose to do it this way. Um, now, of course, if you have your own uh, praise and worship that you prefer to listen to when, when I pause it, um, by all means, um, you can listen to them. The one positive and I always want to say this there's always a positive and I look to the positive aspects of things um, by the way that we're doing them when you you uh, click on to those suggested songs on so from social media it redirects you right to the actual artist's YouTube channel so they get full credit for you being on their YouTube channel and many of them are monetized. So this is how YouTube pays them. Now, if I were to incorporate their music in the actual recording, sure, I can say their name, but they're not getting that type of credit. So we want to support our praise and worship uh, leaders and, and our musicians that bring us anointed music as much as we can. So if you're being redirected right to their YouTube site, uh, you're supporting them because every view um, is counted, I guess, in some way um, by YouTube. And I guess when they get so many views, YouTube starts to pay. Um, so, um, so bear that in mind. Also, if you're on uh, 
the musicians um, YouTube channel take a look at other music that they have um, many of them also have like a, a hyperlink that you can click on to where you can actually purchase their music and if you're able to do so uh, please support them in any way um, this is their calling for the kingdom of heaven and they're 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 doing what they're supposed to do what what the Lord has put on their heart to to do um, so by all means, we want to support what they do because we all have a purpose and we all have a calling that is on our life specifically, uh, and this is theirs. So if you can support them, by all means, support them. Yes, praise and worship is so very, very important. One of the most important elements in any service. So by all means, uh, yes, we want to to still incorporate praise and worship so i'm going to pause it now and when you have done praise and worship then you want to hit play and we will be going into the torah portion for this week and the half torah portion in part one then we will take a short break and then come back and do the second part which will be the brit kadasha scriptures um the altar call and then the closing of shabbat service so i'm going to pause it now and then come back after you've done praise and worship and we'll go on with the Torah portion. Okay, this week's parasha is Va'akanan, and that means, and I besought, or I ask for mercy. So um, we're, we're going to be reading the Torah portion from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 3, verses 23 to Chapter 7, verse 11. Parashat va Ekanon. Moses pleads to enter. I pleaded with that. This is Moses speaking. I pleaded with Adonai at that time, saying, O oh Lord Adonai, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do deeds and mighty acts like yours? Please let me cross over and see the good land across the Jordan, that good hill country, and the Lebanon. But Adonai was angry with me because of you. He, this is Moses still addressing the people. So he would not listen to me enough. Adonai said to me, do not speak to me any more about this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah, look around to the west and the north and the south, south and the east, and see with your eyes, for you will not cross over this Jordan. But commission Joshua, and encourage and strengthen him, for he will cross over before this people, and he will enable them to inherit the land that you will see. So we stayed in the valley opposite Beth Peor. Chapter 4. Benai Israel must listen and obey. Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to do. So he is empowering the second generation um, before they're about to cross over the Jordan with Joshua being their their leader, um, because Moses is about to uh, be gathered to, to his fathers. So that you may live and go in and possess the land that Adonai, the God of your fathers, has given you. You must not add to the word that I am commanding you or take away from it in order to keep the mitzvah of Adonai, your God that I am commanding you. And this is also, this is interesting because you must not add to the word or subtract from the word. We will see this, you, you will see this again stated in Revelation. We are not to add to the word of God. We are not to take away from the word of God. Every word of God is there for a reason. Amen? Amen. And I know there's a lot of people that, that like to cherry pick and take out things that they don't like that, you know, uh, and it may be because they are, are in that sin that is being addressed. But that is a chance to to look at look at that and repent from it. So um, we are not to add or subtract, um, as it says in the book of Revelation. If you add to the word of God, God reserves the right to add all the plagues that are within this Bible on onto you. Or if you subtract, you can subtract your name from the book of life. That's pretty serious. But again, this is a word from a holy God. This, this, the, the, this is a holy word. 
so it is not to be taken lightly. Your eyes have seen what Adonai did at Baal Peor, for Adonai your God has destroyed from among you everyone who followed Baal Peor. But you who held tight to Adonai your God are alive today, all of you. See, just as Adonai my God commanded me, I have taught you statutes and ordinances to do in the land that you are about to enter to possess. You must keep and do them. For it is your wisdom and understanding and in the eyes of the people who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that the God so near to them as Adonai our God is whenever we call on him? What great nation is there that has statutes and ordinances that are righteous like all of this Torah that I am setting before you today? Only be watchful and watch over your soul closely so you do not forget the things your eyes have seen and they slip from your heart all the days of your life. You are to make them known to your children and your children's children. The day you stood before Adonai your God in Horeb, Adonai said to me, Gather the people to me, and I will make them hear my words, so that they learn to fear me all the days that they live on the earth, and so that they teach their children. Words from the fiery mountain. You came near and stood at the bottom of the mountain, while the mountain was blazing with fire up to the heart of the heavens, darkness, cloud, and fog. And I spoke to you from the midst of the fire, the sound of words you heard, but a form you did not see, only a voice. He declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to do, the ten words, or what is known as the ten commandments. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone. And I commanded me that at that time to teach you statutes and ordinances, so that you might do them in the land you are crossing over to possess. So be very watchful over your soul, since you saw no form on the day that Adonai spoke to you in Horeb, Horeb, out of the midst of the fire, so that you do not act corruptly and make for yourselves a graven image in the likeness of any figure, the form of a male or female, the form of any animal that is on the earth, the form of any winged bird that flies in the sky, the form of anything that creeps on the ground, the form of any fish that is in the water under the earth, and so that you do not lift up your eyes towards the heavens and see the sun and the moon and the stars and all the heavenly hosts and are drawn away and bow down and worship them. Adonai, your God, has allotted them to all the peoples under all the heavens, but you, Adonai, has taken, and he brought you out of the iron furnace, out of Egypt, to be a people for his own inheritance, as you are this day. Furthermore, Adonai was angry with me because of your words, and he swore that I would not cross over the Jordan or enter the good land that Adonai your God is giving you for an inheritance, for I must die in this land. I am not crossing over the Jordan, but you will cross over and take possession of that good land. Watch yourselves so that you do not forget the covenant of Adonai your God, which he cut with you, and make for yourselves a graven image in the form of anything that Adonai your God has forbidden you. For Adonai, your God, is a consuming fire, a jealous God. So here he is letting them know um, to not get into idolatry, to not worship any other God but Adonai. Um, and again, you know, through history, we see that our ancestors uh, failed to keep that commandment and they fell into what was going on in the world around them. And that's a good good lesson for all of us. Look at the world around us. We really shouldn't be participating much in what's going on in the world because much of the world is corrupt. And when you see what's going on in the world, what is good is being called evil. What is evil is being called good. God does not want us to be part of that. And it is hard because we live in this world and we, we have to participate because we're living in this world. Um, but we cannot internalize and be part of the corruption in this world. This is where you get the statement, we are in the world, but not of it. We need to look towards the kingdom and act accordingly. But we still do have to function in the world. So it does make it rather difficult at times to tease all of that out. But we need to look to God. We need to, to look and listen for the Holy Spirit to direct us in, in all of our steps. Because we're living in very trying times in, in our world. So um, you, can, you, can, you can see how um, this is being laid out for the people, you know, warning them because they're going to be confronted by all of this stuff.
And yes, uh, spoiler alert, uh, they, they mess up big time. This is why in the book of Judges, God raised up judges to, because they would, they would start um, falling into the ways of the world. They would be worshiping idols and other gods, false gods. They would be doing Baal worship, uh, uh, sacrificing, um, sacrificing to Moloch and Baal. And it was not good. And um, so God would lift his hand and an enemy would come in and, and, sort of enslave them to just they would they would oppress them and then they would cry out to god and he would raise up a judge that was the judges at the beginning and then um they would be okay for a while and then they would mess up again and one and on it went and once they were through the judges they went into the kings and um it went downhill it went downhill really fast for for uh, the the northern kingdom, because um, and that was after Solomon. After Solomon, um, after Solomon's reign, actually the the tribe split into two kingdoms, and the northern kingdom went south really quickly, and they went into captivity uh, through Assyria, and yet the southern kingdom knew that happened. Uh, they only held on for a little bit longer, but uh, they ended up going into Babylonian captivity because of these very things. Moses is warning the people. Okay. When you father children and children's children, children's children, and have been in the land a long time, and you act corruptly and make a graven image in the form of anything and do evil in the sight of Adonai, your God, provoking him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that you will certainly be carried off quickly from the land that you're crossing over the Jordan to possess. And yes, spoiler alert, that did happen. But they they did come, you know, there was a remnant that did come back to the land as well after after a period of time. You will not prolong your days on it, for you will certainly be destroyed. Adonai will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations where Adonai will drive you. There you will serve man-made gods of wood and stone, which do not see or hear or eat or smell. But from there you will seek Adonai your God, and you will find him when you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. So there's that path of redemption as well, that, that merciful uh, nature of God as well. God is a just God, but God is also merciful. When you are in distress and all these things that come on you in the latter days, you will return to Adonai your God and listen to his voice. For Adonai your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon you or destroy you or forget the covenant with your fathers that he swore to them. Indeed, ask now about the former days that were before you from the day that God grant a God created man on the earth and asked from one end of the sky to the other, has there ever been such a great thing as this? Or has anything like it been heard? Has a people ever heard the voice of God speaking from the midst of the fire as you have heard and lived? Or has any God ever tried to come to take for himself a nation from within a nation by trials, by signs and wonders and by war, and by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and by a great and by great terrors like all that Adonai your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes you were shown so that you might know that Adonai is God there is no other besides him from the heavens he made you hear his voice to instruct you and on earth he caused you to see his great fire you heard his words from the midst of the fire because he loved your father's he chose their descendants after them. Then he brought you out from Egypt with his presence by his great power to drive out from before you nations greater and mightier than you to bring you in to give you their land for an inheritance as it is this day. So you will know today and take to heart that Adonai, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth below. There is no other. You must keep his statutes and his midst though which I am commanding you today, so that it may go well with you and with your children after you, and so that you may prolong your days in the land that Adonai your God is giving you for all time. 
Then Moses set apart three cities beyond the Jordan toward the east. There the manslayer might flee, who kills his neighbor unintentionally, so that would be like, you know, by an accident, and did not hate him previously. So it wasn't like a pre it could not be premeditated, in other words. He may flee to one of these cities and live. Bezer in the wilderness on the plateau for the Reubenites, Ramot in the, in the Gilead for the Gadites, and Golan in the Bashan for the Manasites. This is the Torah which Moses set before Benai Israel. These are the testimonies and the statutes and ordinances which Moses spoke to Benai Israel when they came out from Egypt beyond the Jordan in the valley opposite Beth Beor in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites who lived in Heshbon, uh, whom Moses and Benai Israel struck down when they came out from Egypt. They took possession of his land and the land of Og, king of the Bashan, the, the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan towards the east from Ar Aror, which is on the edge of the Wadi Arnon, as far as Mount Sion, which that is Hermon, and all that all the Arabah beyond the Jordan eastward, as far as the east of the Arabah under the slopes of Pisgah. Chapter 5, the Ten Words, or the Ten Commandments. Uh, Moses called to all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and ordinances that I am speaking in your hearing today. Learn them and make sure to do them. Adonai, our God, cut a covenant with us in Horeb. Not with our fathers has Adonai cut this covenant, but with us. All of us alive here today, Adonai spoke with you face to face on the mountain from the midst of the fire. I was standing between Adonai and you at that time to tell you the word of Adonai because you were afraid because of the fire and did not go up the mountain. He said, I am Adonai, your God, who brought you up, up from the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. You shall not have other gods beside me. Do not make for yourself a graven image. No image of what is in the heavens above or on the earth, beneath or in the water under the earth. Do not bow down to them or worship them, for I, Adonai, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children, and on the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my mitzvah. You must not take the name of Adonai, your God, in vain, for Adonai will not leave unpunished anyone who takes his name in vain. Observe Yom Shabbat to keep it holy, as Ananiah your God commanded you. Six days you are to labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. In it you are not to do any work, not you or your son, your daughter, or your slave or your maid or your ox, your donkey, or any of your livestock or the outsider within your gate, so that your slave and your maid may rest as you do. You must remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and Adonai your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, Adonai your God commanded you to keep Yom Shabbat on your father and your mother, just as Adonai your God commanded you, so that your days may be long and it may go well with you in the land Adonai your God is giving you. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor desire your neighbor's house, his field, his manservant, his maidservant, his ox, his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These words that I spoke to all your assembly on the mountain from the midst of the fire, the cloud, and the fog with a great voice. He added no more. He wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. Live and prolong your days. As soon as you heard the voice from the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was blazing with fire, you came near to me. All the herds of your tribe, the, uh, I'm sorry, all the heads of your tribes and your elders. Then you said, Adonai, our God has just shown us his glory and his greatness. And we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire. This day we have seen that Adonai speaks with man and yet he keeps on, and yet he keeps on living. Now then, why should we die for this great fire will consume us? If we hear the voice of Adonai, our God, any more than we will die. For who is there of all flesh who has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the midst of the fire as we have and lived? You go near and hear all that Adonai, our God, says. Then you tell us all what Adonai, our God, tells you, and we will hear it and do it. 
Adonai, Adonai heard the tone of your words when you spoke to me, and Adonai said to me, I've heard the tone of the words that this people has spoken to you. They've done well in all they have spoken. If only there were such a heart in them to fear me and keep all my mitzvah always so that it might go well with them and with their children forever. Go say to them, return to your tents. But as, as for you, stand here by me and I will tell you the whole commandment, both the statutes and the ordinances that you are to teach them. And they will do them in the land I am giving them to possess. So you must take care to do as Adonai your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. You are to walk in, in all the way that Adonai your God has commanded you, so that you may live and it may be well with you, and you may prolong your days in the land that you will possess. Really, they forfeited the, the ability to, to reestablish that relationship with God that was lost from the Garden of Eden by saying, no, Moses, we will die if we hear him. You, you, you basically have the relationship. Have him tell us, Tell, tell you what, what we should do and we'll do it. So they got the Torah. They got the law um, first. Um, and um, that is what that is what, what happened. Um, unfortunately they did they forfeited the chance to have that relationship. But as we know in 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 the Brit Kasha we are cautioned to not to not forfeit that, you know, we, Yeshua died for us and we have the ability to have that relationship with the Lord, that one-on-one -on -one relationship, um, you know, the, the type of relationship where, where, where you have dialogue with God because he loves you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to hear, hear you. He wants relationship with you. Um, and by, by, by having that type of relationship, then we are more inclined to follow his mitzvah, his commandments. And this is why Yeshua also, the long and short of it is, is there were so many commandments. And, and this is why the people could not keep them because, you know, we're in a fleshly body. The people sinned. And then there had to be an animal sacrifice system that was put in place to cover the sins of the people. And that was an ongoing thing. And there was a lot of innocent blood shed because of sin, um, including Yeshua, who was the ultimate sacrifice for us. Okay, chapter six. Now, this is the commandment of the statutes and ordinances that Adonai, your God, commanded to teach you to do in the land you were crossing over to possess, so that you might fear Adonai, your God, to keep all his statutes and mitzvah that I am commanding you and your son and your son's sons all the days of your life, so that you may prolong your days. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and take care to do this, so that it may go well with you, and you may increase mightily as Adonai, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. So he's repeating, um, he's actually repeating things, repeating the mitzvah. And here we go into the Shema, uh, which um, is, it, this is very important. This is the Lord's greatest commandment of all. And this is found in Deuteronomy chapter six, beginning with verse four, Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Find them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Yeshua repeated this when he was here. He, he, he stated, this is the, the Lord's greatest commandment. When you prosper, do not forget. Now when Adonai, your God, brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, to, I, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of all good things that you did not fill, and cisterns dug that you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant, and you eat and are full, then watch yourself so that you do not forget Adonai, who brought you out from the land of Egypt, from the house of slavery. You must fear Adonai your God and serve him and swear by his name. 
you must not go after other gods, the gods of the peoples around you, the world, in other words, do not fall by the ways of the world. For Adonai, your God, in the midst of you is a jealous God. Otherwise, the anger of Adonai, your God, will be kindled against you, and he will wipe you from the face of the earth. You are not to test Adonai, your God, as you tested him at, at Masa, um, and that's M-A-S-S-A-H. Diligently keep the mitzvah of Adonai, your God, and his testimonies and his statutes that he has commanded you. You are to do what is right and good in the sight of Adonai, so that it may go well with you, and you may go in and possess the good land that Adonai swore to your fathers to drive out all your enemies from before you, as Adonai has spoken. When your son asks, when your son asks you in time to come, saying, What are the testimonies and the statutes and ordinances that Adonai our God commanded you? Then you are to tell your son, We were slaves to Pharaoh. In Egypt, and Adonai brought us out from Egypt with a mighty hand before our eyes. Adonai showed signs and wonders, great and terrible, on Egypt, on Pharaoh, and all his house. Then he brought us out from there so that he might bring us in to give us the land that he swore to our fathers. Adonai commanded us to do all these statutes to fear Adonai our God for our God, for, for our good always, to keep us alive, as is the case this day. It will be righteousness to us if we take care to do all this commandment before Adonai, our God, just as he has commanded us. So here we go again, um, chapter 7, uh, to reiterate the, the title, the subtitle here is No Mixing with Idolaters. So when Adonai, your God, brings you into the land you are entering to possess and drives out many nations before you, the Hittite and the, the Girgashite and the Amorite, and the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, seven nations more numerous and mightier than you, and Adonai your God gives them over to you, and you strike them down, then you are to utterly destroy them. You are to make no covenant with them, and show no mercy to them. You are not to intermarry with them. You are not to give your daughter to his son, or take his daughter for your son, for he will turn your son away from following me to serve other gods. Then the anger of Adonai will be kindled against you, and he will swiftly destroy you. Instead, you are to deal with them like this, tear down their altars, smash their pillars, cut down their Asherah poles, and burn their carved images with fire. For you are a holy people to Adonai your God. From all the peoples on the face of the earth, Adonai your God has chosen you to be his treasured people. It is not because you are more numerous than all the peoples that Adonai set his love on you and chose you you are the least of all peoples rather because of his love for you and is keeping the oath he swore to your fathers and i brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery from the hand of pharaoh king of egypt know therefore that Adonai, your god he is god the faithful god who keeps covenant kindness for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his mitzvah but repays those who hate him to their face to annihilate them. He will not hesitate with him who hates him. He will repay him to his face. Therefore, you are to keep the commandment, both the statutes and the ordinances that I am commanding you today to do them. And that is the end of our Torah portion for this week. Uh, We're going to do a quick recap on that. Parashat Va'ekanon and I besought or or asked for mercy or pleaded and that's how this this Torah portion opens up uh, when Moses continues to speak to um, the children of Israel he said then I pleaded with the Lord Um, he was pleading with the Lord to 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 let him go into the promised land but the Lord said no So in last week's Torah portion, Devarim, the Israelites stood poised at the edge of the promised land on the east of the Jordan, ready to cross over and possess the land. Before they crossed, Moses began summarizing for the people their 30-year history of wandering in the the wilderness. And this week, we're continuing with that. And this week, he is going over the rules, the mitzvot, the commandments, 
Several of the best known and fundamental passages of scripture in the entire Tanakh, the Old Testament, are in this week's Torah portion, such as the Shema, the Shema, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Here is, Hear, O Israel, Adonai our God, Adonai is one, and you are to love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your strength. So um, this is the the first prayer spoken in the morning and the last in the evening before sleep is often the final prayer on the lips of, 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 of our people on their deathbed. And it has been uttered by many martyrs as they gave up their spirits to the Lord. There's a very interesting story about the Shema. Um, just uh, the long and short of uh, the long and short of of it, it um there were 500 children were returned um to their to 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 families or family members after the holocaust um these uh children um had actually been being protected in christian institutions um and with with christian families um they were um there was a uh, an orphanage um it was a Christian orphanage that uh, there was a lot of the children were um, were being kept there, and um, I think it was a Catholic or or orphanage. And um, Rabbi Herzog um, Yitzhak Halevi Herzog went on a historic mission to find these children and return them to their families. Uh, so one day he arrived at a monastery in 1946. Uh, and this was a monastery that had been known to have taken in Jewish children sent away by their parents to protect them from the Nazi terror uh, that ravaged through Europe. Um, but now it was time to, for the children to be able to return to their home and to their parents um, or, or family members. And um, Rabbi turned to um, the, 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 I guess the, the head nun there thanking her for saving the lives of the children, but requesting to receive them back. And the nun, the nun, I, I guess at first they said, there's no Jewish children here. Um, however, he asked if he could say a prayer and what he did was started saying Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu and all the Jewish children Cried out for their their parents, shouting "Mama" and "Papa," because that's what they learned when they were when they were little children. They learned the Shema, so that's how he was able to identify uh, which were the the Jewish children, because um, they immediately dozens of children rush rush towards him, um, sobbing uncontrollably, saying "Mama" and "Papa." Um, so. Though few of the children remembered much of their early lives, the sound of the Shema, the most famous prayer in, in, in the faith, instantly brought back memories of reciting these before bedtime with their parents. So many of the children were recovered and returned to families as a result of the Shema. So that's just a little bit of history there that I wanted to share. Um, really interesting and wonderful actually so moses was reminding the people of how he pleaded with god for the privilege of entering the promised land but god refused to grant his request um and he said he would not uh enter the promised land because he disobediently struck the rock twice in the wilderness of zin instead of speaking to it as god had commanded because god was supposed to get the glory not what an action that he did and this happened when the nation's water well dried up after his sister Miriam died. Moses and Aaron prayed about the situation, and God told Moses to give the people water by speaking to the rock. But Moses was angry with the people for their whining and carrying on. He called the people rebels and uh, hit the rock. He was he, he they had put him through a lot, and he just lost his patience, and it cost him. Uh, and Aaron also, they were not going to go into the promised land. Um, and actually Adonai said, because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the, of, of the, of these people, you will not bring this community into the land that I'm giving them. So, um, 
God said no to Moses, even when he pleaded. But God did love Moses. Don't uh, he didn't he he did not do this and he he had had said no and uh, the commission was given um, the mantle was passed on to Joshua. Um, Joshua, whose Hebrew name is Yahashua, meaning the Lord of salvation, takes the people into the promised land where they will take hold of all that God has promised. Um, <clears throat> it is said that he's a type of Messiah, uh, Yeshua, which is a form of the name Yahashua, will one day take his people into the true promised land of heaven where we will not perish but inherit an eternal life. Now Moses continues to go over the like the ten the Ten Commandments. He's going over the mitzvah, uh, warning the people, you know, not to, uh, you know, not to fall into idolatry, not to fall into the ways of the, you know, the 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 world around them, and start worshiping false gods. Um, that God is a jealous God, and they need to only be worshiping Him. Uh, he exhorts the people to keep God's Torah and to live in obedience to God's ways so that they may take possession of the land and they may st remain there. He warns them to not forget the Torah of God and to dil diligently teach all of this to their children and, and their children's children. Um, and he reminded them three times that Adonai spoke from the fire at Sinai, in which he did not have a form. Therefore, because they saw no image of God, they are not to carve for themselves images of God, which is detrimental to faith, nor of other gods, which is idolatry. So they're not to have images. This prohibition of the making of carved images is accompanied by the warning that God is a consuming fire. Um, God is a consuming fire, a jealous God, El Cana. The name of God used in this verse is El Cana, jealous God. This name is also mentioned elsewhere in Parashat, um, in this Parashat in Deuteronomy chapter 5. And in Exodus, in which Cana is often translated as zealous. The names and titles of God declare to the world who he is. They also answer our deepest questions regarding our relationship to God. The name El Elkana reveals that God is protective of his people and his relationship with them in the same way that the relationship between a husband and wife is sacred. He will not share our praise and devotion with other gods. In fact, the covenant God made with Israel at Mount Sinai is likened to a marriage ceremony complete with a cloud covering, symbolizing the kupa, the marriage canopy, and the ketchupa marriage contract, outlining the responsibilities and privileges of both bride and bridegroom and the agreed upon vows. God is therefore asking his people to be faithful to him, forsaking all other gods, all forms of idolatry and worship of false gods, is spiritual adul adul adultery and can be likened to an unfaithful spouse. And we will see that as we read the Bible and see how Adonai addresses uh, Israel when that does occur and, and, and those words are used. The Lord lovingly and faithfully watches over his bride and jealously guards her like a passionate husband protecting his bride. Adonai will scatter you among the peoples and among the nations to which Adonai will lead you away. You will be left few in numbers. That is the warning if they are unfaithful to Adonai and, and talking about exile. Moses prophesied the tragic consequences of Israel straying from their devotion to God and turning to idols, and they would be sent into exile and scattered to the four corners of the earth. And the word for exile is galut, G-A-L-U-T. This is exactly what happened when the Babylonians and the Romans destroyed the holy temples and Jerusalem. And that's talking about both of them, both temples, first and second. However, God is merciful. He promised that if the people would repent then and turn back to him with all of their heart and soul, then he would relent and bring them back to the land. Indeed, in fulfillment of a great number of prophecies, including those of Moses, the Lord did bring his people home from Babylon. And in these last days, he is once again bringing his people home. So um, 
this is a miracle that has happened in our very generation as our people are beginning to return to the land, our forefathers from the north, south, east, and west. It is not because of our righteousness that uh, we, uh, some of us have returned back to the land, um, but because of the covenant God made with our ancestors. So yes, there are many that have made Eliah and are back in Israel. Many of us are still out in the diaspora. And the diaspora is is simply uh, we are out. We're, we're not in, in the Holy Land, in the land of Israel, the restored land of Israel. We are uh, still the scattered throughout the nations. So we know that um, Adonai allowed Moses to see from the north, south, east, and west, um, from the top of uh, Mount Pisgah, um, to see the land that the people were about to possess. He allowed him to see it, uh, but he told them he's not going there. So there were there was another example also when God said no. Uh, God said no to Moses. Uh, Moses is pleading to, to see the promised land. And Moses did accept, you know, God's answer. Um, we also saw that, you know, King David, um, King David's infant son from the, the adulterous affair with Bathsheba um, when he became gravely ill, uh, David begged God to spare the child's life. He fasted and prayed, prostrated himself face to the ground all night, but the child died. Um, and King David, when he learned of that, he picked himself up, washed and anointed himself, changed his clothing and went into the house of the Lord and worship. And he went home and ate something uh, and he submitted to the will of God. David realized that God and his wisdom had made his judgment and he accepted it, recognizing God's divine rule and sovereignty. In the Brit Kadashah, we also see an example uh, of perfect submission in Yeshua HaMashiach. Uh, even he was met with the answer no from, from Adonai in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeshua asked if the cup of suffering could be taken from him, saying, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Although Yeshua was sorrowful and deeply distressed to realize the terrible suffering that he was about to endure, even death on the cross, he submitted to the will of God, saying, Oh, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. In Hebrew, the Garden of Gethsemane is called Get Shemenem. Shemenem, I think I'm saying that correctly. G A T S H E N A N I M. And it means Shemenem is uh, plural for oil, uh, oil press. Since oil represents the anointing of the Ruach HaKadesh, the Holy Spirit, it was an appropriate place for Yeshua to submit to the will of Abba, Father and receiving an anointing to carry it out. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. Hebrews chapter five, verse eight says, what can we learn from Moses, David, and Yeshua? We learn that there will be times when God's resounding no may cause us pain and sorrow. We can also learn that God says no for a variety of reasons. For instance, in the case of Moses and David, the consequences of sin was involved. In the case of Yeshua in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was but one way for the will of God, mankind's redemption from sin to be accomplished. Other examples are, you know, God has a perfect will and plan for each of us. And if he would were to say yes to something that really wasn't perfect for us, that wouldn't be good either. So he has a better, better, better way than what we do. So what we may be asking for is something that is not going to do us do us justice and is not going to glorify the Lord either, um, but it may be harmful to us. And God knows all things, so we need to, we do need to trust in 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 His direction and guidance, because He absolutely does have a perfect will and plan for our for our lives. So Moses was passing the torch to the next generation, um, and. The importance of encouraging and strengthening the next generation to follow God is important for us to do too. I mean, the children that are coming up, they need to know the truth. 
Uh, they need to know that the world is 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 upside down. They need to know um, all about God and how holy God is and and how good God is and what God has done and what He is doing. We also learned about the Shema, the most famous prayer in in in, in our for our people. Um, it's the Lord's greatest commandment of all. And it is in everybody's Bible. You don't have to, you know, even even uh, the Gentiles read this in the Bible. In both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because Yeshua states it as well. He highlighted the importance of the, of the Shema, of the Lord's greatest commandment. The Shema is an affirmation affirmation of basic ten tenets of faith. It also is a declaration in one God for a nation surrounded by a sea of pagans worshiping a variety of false gods. We have one sovereign God. And it expresses our duty to love God with all our heart, soul, and might. The love of God is a distinctive mark of a true worshiper. The first letter of John provides a wonderfully a wonderful answer for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. This is found in 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. The Vahafta also reveals that loving God involves what we say. We are to teach his commandments to our children and speak about the word of God all day long. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. So um, we are even to go so far as, as binding God's word as a sign on our hand and between our eyes. In other words, loving God involves not only what we say and teach, but what we think and do. Now, there are some that, that put, put a Teflon little leather boxes containing these verses, and they're worn on the head and arm. Um, the love of God involves where we go and how we live. For that reason, the word of God is also to be written on the doorposts of our house and on our gates. Now, there's what is known as a mezuzah um, that is affixed to the right-hand side of a doorpost. Um, and the little box contains a parchment on which the Shema is carefully written. Um, and the word Shaddai Almighty is written on the back of the parchment. Mezuzah is a symbol of God's watchful care over the house and, and its occupants. It's a reminder to everyone who goes in and goes out of this house is devoted to God and keeping his commandments. The mezuzah in itself is a declaration. As for me and my household, household we will serve the Lord. And that is, a, that is a passage from Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. We are going to go into the half Torah portion, and that is from the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 31. Comfort, proclaim good news. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to the heart of Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed, for she has received from Adonai's hand double for all her sins. Now, again, the, the spoiler alert, yes. Um, there we know that Israel sinned and and was carried sin continuously repented sinned repented and then then it got really bad once um the kingdoms were split and we had the northern kingdom that was carried off to Assyria and then the southern kingdom to Babylon so um this is Isaiah addressing um, these people as well. Uh, he was a prophet that actually forewarned, uh, forewarned them of, of the upcoming calamity that would occur to them. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of Adonai, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now this is speaking of Yeshua, prophesying actually of Yeshua. Isaiah does prophesy of the first and second coming of Yeshua. Every valley will be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground will be a plain and the rugged terrain smooth. 
the glory of Adonai will be revealed and all flesh will see it together for the mouth of Adonai has spoken. A voice is saying, cry out. So I said, what shall I cry out? All flesh is, is grass and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades for the breath of Adonai blows on it. Surely the people are, are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Get yourself up on the high mountain, you who bring good news to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, you who bring good news to Jerusalem. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Look, Adonai Elohim comes with might, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Like a shepherd who tends his flock, he gathers the lambs in his arms, carries them in his bosom, and gently guides nursing ewes. Who is like him? Who has measured the waters in the palm of his hand and measured out heaven with a span or calculated the dust of the earth in a measure or weighed the mountains in scales or the hills in a balance? Who can fathom the rock at a knife or instruct him as his counselor? With whom did he consult or who instructed him? Who taught him in the path of justice or taught him knowledge? Who informed him about the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and count as a speck of dust on the scales. Behold, the islands weigh as fine dust. Lebanon is not enough to burn or its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. By him, they are counted null and void. To whom then will you liken God? To what likeness will you compare him? To an idol, a craftsman cast it, a goldsmith overlays it with golden fashioned silver chains for it. One to pour for such an offering chooses wood that will that will not rot. He chooses for a skilled craftsman to prepare him an idol that will not totter. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? He sits above the circle of the earth. Its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the skies like a curtain, spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He reduces princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth a confusion. Scarcely are they planted. Scarcely are they sown. Scarcely their stem takes root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither. And a storm carries them off as stubble. To whom then will you liken me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. The one who brings out their host by number. The one who calls them all by name. Because of his great strength and vast power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from Adonai, and the justice do me escapes the notice of my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Adonai is the eternal God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow tired or weary. He understands. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives strength to the weary, and to the one without vigor, he adds might. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but they who wait for Adonai will renew their strength. They will soar up with wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And that is the end of the half tour portion. So we are going to quickly recap on the Torah and the half Torah portion, and then we will take a break and come back with the second part of Shabbat service. Again, the Akanan means I pleaded, or and I be or I besought, or asked for mercy. Uh, Moses tells the people of how Israel, uh, how he implored Adonai to allow him to enter the land of Israel, but Adonai refused, instructing him. Instead, to ascend a mountain to see the promised land and also to um, pass the mantle on to Joshua. Continuing to review the review of the Torah, Moses describes the exodus from Egypt and the giving of the Torah, declaring them unprecedented events in human history. Has there ever occurred this great thing or has the lights of it ever been heard? Did ever people hear the voice of Adonai speaking out of the midst of fire and live? And he says, you were shown to know that the, the Lord is God. There is none else besides him. 
Moses predicts that in future generations, people will turn from God, worship idols, and be exiled from their land and scattered among the nations. But from there, they will seek God and return to obey his commandments. Our, th this parasha all, also includes a repetition of the Ten Commandments, the verses of the Shema, which declare the fundamentals of our faith, the unity of Adonai, here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, the mitzvah to love God, to study his Torah, and to bind these words as tefillin on our arms and heads, and inscribe them in the mezuzot affixed on the doorposts of our homes. Now, Isaiah, this week's Haftarot, is the first of a series of seven Haftarot of Consolation. These seven commenced on the Shabbat following Tisha B'Av, and of course we had Tisha B'Av, this week, and they will continue until Rosh Hashanah, which will be Tishri 1. This section of Isaiah begins with God's exhortation of the prophets, console oh, or comfort, oh, comfort, oh, comfort my people, announced to Jerusalem that her period of exile has been fulfilled and her sins have been forgiven. Isaiah's prophecy describes some of the miraculous events that will unfold with the onset of the Messianic era such as the return of the exiles to Jerusalem, the revelation of God's glory and the rewards and retribution that will then be meted out. The prophet then goes on to comfort the people, describing God's power and might and reassuring them of his care for his people. And also, we've, we've got the Messianic prophecy here. because, um, and, and we hear this with John the Baptist. A voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of Adonai, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Father God, we thank you for this powerful word. We thank you. We thank you that we have the ability to look at the historical facts in this Bible because we know they're facts. We know this has happened to our ancestors. We thank you for the ability to, to be able to read this, to study your word, to take it to heart, to learn from history so that hopefully we do not fall into these same patterns that our ancestors did over and over again. We have written teachings. We have the Bible to, to look at and to, and to caution ourselves in the world that we live in because there is nothing new under the sun, as Solomon has stated, and our world is just as corrupt, if not even worse, um, today. And we do need to hold fast to you, hold fast to, to what is right and just. And we love you, Father God, and may everything that we do glorify your holy name. We give you all our praise. All honor belongs to you. We thank you for who you are. You are our God. And we love you. We pray this prayer in the mighty name, the name above all names, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. We'll take a short break and we'll come back with 